We do a lot of crypto meetups, so this is one of the very first uh, <coughs> altcoin type meetups for uh, aside from just Bitcoin and other you know big name uh, cryptocurrencies. I mean, I only got into Monero like maybe a couple of months ago. I'm still learning it myself, so I was like, oh, why don't I just share what I know with other people that are new to it too, right? So that's why I was like, oh, let's do a crypto meetup, you know? So because there's not many that are focused on other coins to just educate other people about the coins. So I'm not gonna pump the coins, I'm not gonna talk about price or anything, right? So it's just about, you know, just learning about it. That's, that's the whole intention of the meetup and just sharing whatever uh, others have learned, uh, right? So that's, uh, so what I have a uh, quick presentation is Monero intro. For those that don't know, uh, Monero actually means coin in the Esperanto language. Esperanto language is not really a language from a specific country. It's kind of a decentralized language in a way where uh, the backstory, I don't know the full backstory, but I know it was invented sometime in World War II to unite all the um, European nations or something like that and to just have a common language. And Monero means coin. So that's something I learned once I did my research. So that was pretty interesting. So uh, a little history of Monero is that uh, back in 2012, uh, there was a coin that was developed using a uh, crypto note uh, algorithm and the first coin was called Bitcoin. Uh, nobody paid attention to it until 2014. That's when it really kind of picked up um, attention. Uh, from there, 2014, 80% of the coins were already mined on Bitcoin. So the thing is that developers saw that uh, the tech was very interesting, so then they decided to, um, to fork it. So when they forked it, originally it was called Bit Monero in, 20, in April of uh, 2014. And then eventually it got renamed to Monero as what we see today. And then from uh, 2014 to 2016, there was literally no good wallets. Uh, back in the days, everything there was no GUI wallets where you could click around, where you could send and receive stuff. Everything had to be done in the command line. I remember back in the days when I used to uh, browse uh, uh, Bitcoin talk forums and just check the altcoin section. I always see Monero popping up uh, as a discussion, and then I never paid any attention to it. Back then, it was like literally like pennies, right? I never paid attention because back in the days there were other uh, privacy coins like Monero. They had a uh, Blueberry, I think it was and a couple other ones. So I didn't really know too much about Monero. I didn't look into it because, because you know, the Blueberry uh, uh, people funding Monero and then Monero funding other, and it's like, I don't know what to believe at that time. So then I didn't, I didn't touch it at all, right? So, <coughs> so that, that's the backstory with that. So everything's command line up until, I think it was 2016 uh, or 2017 when the GUI wallet really came out and then it, it, more, more people uh, started using it. So one of the very first Monero uh, transactions was for a painting for 2,500 XMR. Today that's like, I don't know how much, it's like a million dollars, I don't know, half a million dollars, something like that, right? So hopefully in the future it'll be like a billion dollars, <laughs> right? Uh, same thing with the pizza story for uh, Bitcoin. Um, so uh, for Monero to get uh, public attention, uh, it was originally uh, got accepted by Alphabay. Alphabay was one of the dark net uh, auction sites like uh, Silk Road. It came after Silk Road, but eventually they took them down, the feds figured out all this stuff. Uh, and then they were able to take down the site and then a whole bunch of other ones pop up as usual. Right? And the interesting thing is that when they took down Alphabay, um, the feds gave a report, I think it was last year, I'm not too sure, uh, where they said they were able to see how much Bitcoins Alphabay had. I don't know, it was a couple thousand or something. Oh, it was a lot, right? Uh, it was either Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Litecoin. They were able to see how much Alphabay had, but when they tried to see how much they had in Monero, it was just a question mark. They didn't know what it was because it's, it's so private, right? So that's when it really raised my eyebrow. I was like, oh, damn, it's like, what the hell? And then it's like, I gotta look at this again. It's like, that's very interesting. Cause then 
once you see uh, things get adopted on the dark web, you could see it eventually come into the into the public eye eventually, and then that's that's like where you should really look in the dark web to see what what are the hackers and the drug dealers are using, right? Just to get an idea to, to see what's coming, right? So they find it useful. That's why you know they started taking it. All right. So that's a very very brief history, right? Um, and then I'm gonna go into. Uh, the purpose of Monero. So a lot of times uh, people would be like, oh, but you got all these other coins, who cares? And like, oh, Monero is just another coin. But that's not the case, right? The tech is really, I find it really amazing after I learned about it. Uh, so it really comes down to three technologies that make Monero really, really interesting. Uh, so first thing is called ring signatures. Ring signatures, uh, you can think of it up as a where you had like a whole bunch of dollar bills and you dump it on the table and everybody else dumps their money on the table and then you mix it all together and you take back your money and give it back to uh, actually you you tell the receiver to just pick out the dollars from from the from the stash so you don't know who really gave you those dollars in a way that's kind of how it works from my understanding i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure that's how ring signatures work and then um Stealth addresses, the next thing is, what that is, is if you ever sent Bitcoin or any uh, Ethereum or Litecoin and you look at the blockchain, you will be, and look at like blockchain.info, you, you'll see that uh, coins came from one address and it got sent to another address. And you can see that, you know, once you put your face to that Bitcoin address, now they know who you are. Like Coinbase, they know, who, who you are if you, if you uh, were to use a specific Bitcoin address. Because you see on the blockchain and where your coin goes, they see everything, right? So what Stealth Address does in Monero, they hide all addresses. So it's completely invisible. You don't, they don't know who it is. So when you look at the blockchain, they will be like, oh, okay, well, uh, you ju it's, just, it's just a random gibberish, kind of, right? But the thing is that you still see the, how much money was transacted. You can see that something happened at this time, point in time. Let's say 10 Monero got sent, and, and you can see that it's just, it just got sent somewhere. But because it's 10 Monero, you could link it back to a person. So that's when the dirt uh, tech comes into play. This was tested in uh, 2016, and it was uh, recently made mandatory on all transactions in 2017. What our uh, Ring CT, uh, Ring Confidential Transaction does, is you hide the transaction amount. So now you can hide the addresses and you can hide the amount. So now it's completely anonymous, right? Now you can't even see how much money they have, which is what happened in Alphabet, I, I believe, because you just can't see anything <coughs> now, right? But there are still some other vulnerabilities where you could um, reveal the identity of specific users. They're trying to solve that problem also, but that's coming maybe mm -hmm. end of the year or next year. But these are the main ones that makes Monero Monero right now and that I find very amazing. No other coin has this setup, aside from forks of this coin, like Aeon maybe or, or some other uh, ones. I think Sumo Coin, that was a new one. Uh, but, but, there, but, but this is what makes Monero Monero. And now the thing is, what's the purpose, right? Okay, so for those that might not understand fungibility, I didn't know what it was until maybe literally a couple months ago. I had no idea what it was. I, I read it in forums on the Reddit, like they talk about, oh, Bitcoin is fungible, but Monero is fungible. And then they say, Bitcoin is not fungible. And I'm like, okay, like what the hell does that even mean, right? And then, so basically it's capable of being substituted in place of one another. Fungible example, uh, everyone will understand is, is when you split your $100 bills into five $20 bills. The value is still $100, so it's, fun it's a fungible currency. So a currency has to be fungible to, to be useful, okay? When people talk about fungibility, it's not, is something fungible or it's not fungible? It's really, it's a scale, is it how fungible is it? Is it really fungible or is it less fungible? Because then when people say Bitcoin is not fungible at all, that's not true. It is fungible up to a certain point, but Monero is more fungible than Bitcoin. So that's the idea behind it. When, when, when people tell you like 
Bitcoin is not fungible. It is fungible to a point, right? So uh, the first generation coins like Bitcoin, uh, uh, Litecoin, or Dogecoin, uh, so they have a tainting feature. Well, it's not really a feature, but I call it a feature where you can see the blockchain and you can see where coins go, right? So you could technically taint the coins. You could mark the coins. It's the same effect as if I gave you a hundred dollar bill and I wrote my name on the hundred dollar bill, and then I tell the whole room, "Don't take the hundred dollar bill with my name on it." So I just tainted the hundred dollar bill. So technically, you could do this with Bitcoin because mm -hmm. it's a transparent blockchain. Okay. So when when the thing is that you could taint cryptocurrencies. It leads to certain problems, which we are starting to see in the past couple of years. So a lot of times where people buy stuff on the dark web with their Coinbase, not thinking or understanding how fungibility works, they will get their Coinbase account closed. I have friends that tell me about this all the time. So it's the, also the other thing is that it's not even that people that has a Coinbase account that, um, that gets because they go on dark web to buy it, they actually, maybe they sell their Bitcoins to a friend and then, and then their friend gives those Bitcoins, sells it to somebody else, and then this person goes to the dark web and buys drugs or something, or sends it to a terrorist group or something, you know? But now it links all the way back to you because those Bitcoins came from somewhere. It came from you, your Coinbase account. They have your ID, they have your social security number, they know where you live, and then they will, they will either, you know, Close your account, or worst case scenario, you get a visit by the FBI, right? And see and see where it came from. I mean, for people that really understand blockchain and Bitcoin and stuff, uh, those people that really understand it, they will understand to not sell coins to people you don't know, because it's just too risky. I don't want to deal with the headache of people paying me a visit or having my Coinbase closed, right? That's just not worth my time. Uh, so same thing with uh, the last last week or two, uh, there was a hack. Uh, BitGrail they they hacked for I think it was uh, 500 million uh, Rye blocks, and that now the thing is that these Rye blocks. I mean, it's just another cryptocurrency, but the thing is that now these Rye blocks that were stolen by that the hacker, these these things these coins are tainted now. Perfect example: Binance. The CEO tweeted that they see that you you have possession of these stolen coins from this big grail exchange, they can freeze your account. So that's really annoying to deal with, right? Because of transparent blockchain. Originally, nobody thought about this, you know, in the beginning. I mean, I'm sure some people have, but we don't really see the effects until like in the past couple of years where we see all these crazy hacks, right? So we have a very basic knowledge transfer that uh, I like to share, what I learned uh, in the past couple of months for all the newcomers or people that are still learning Monero. Okay, so uh, very first thing when I got into it, I was like, uh, why are there four keys to Monero? Because I'm, I'm coming from Bitcoin, right? Everyone's used to two keys. You got you your public key and you got a private key. Public key, uh, you know, you, that's your address. You give it to people. Uh, so your private key, you keep it. You know, that's how you spend your coins. But in Monero, you have four keys. That's, I was, and I was like, oh, okay, what, what is this? This is like really confusing, all right? So you have a public view. So the thing is that there's two type of keys in uh, Monero. It's what they call a view key and a spend key. And, a, and in the view key, there's two types of view keys. You have a public view key and you have a private view key. And then a public spend key and a public, I mean, a private spend key. And when you see a Monero address, their mail address is just ridiculously long, so long. I don't know why it's so long. It is like really long. So a Monero address, it consists of your public view key plus your public spend key. They hash it together and then they run some function and then they get your Monero address. That's how it works, okay? So, so when I'm coming into Monero, I'm thinking, oh, I, I, I have to give my public view key to someone, right? To, but no, that's not the case. So. So when you see a public view key and public spend key, uh, you don't just give that to somebody. You have to combine it somehow using a wallet to get your Monero address. Uh, and then that's what you give to someone to pay you. And never, obviously, never review your private spend key. Okay? So the private spend key is used to send your Monero out. But the thing is that you can give your private view key 
Your private view key is to create watch only wallets, meaning you could watch money coming in, but you can't send it out. So that's where maybe you wanna watch your savings account in Monero and just see, you know, make sure you know you got your coins still there, uh, but where you can't send it out. So that's when you use a private view key. Yeah, private view key. Yeah, it's, it's a little confusing. I mean, you have to wrap your head around it, maybe read up. I mean, you don't have to know like the super technical details of how they come up with the address. Just know that, you know, it's, it's just four keys versus two in Bitcoin. Same here with Ethereum, that's two, right? So next, I have a very quick overview of the Monero GUI wallet. Uh, so this is the receive tab. Uh, so just so you know, the Monero, the Co Monero Core Wallet, you get it from uh, getmonero.org and the download is, is, is a very big download, so, so keep that in mind. But the thing is that there's really no other alternative to store your Monero, so you have to <laughs> kind of use this if you're using a desktop. And a lot of the uh, mobile wallets, they only came out recently, like literally like three months ago. So I, I, I wouldn't use them yet because I, I want to make sure it's battle tested first, right? Uh, so, so uh, with the Monero uh, wallet, so this is the receive tab. So I'm gonna go over some of the. I don't know if you guys can see. You guys should be able to see. Uh, but okay, so you have to address on top. So keep in mind, remember, uh, public view, public view key, public spend key combined to get your address. Literally, when somebody sends you Monero, you don't even know where it came from. There's no part. There's no receiving address that say, oh, it came from this address. No, you can't even see that. That's how crazy private it is, right? So what they came up with a solution to, to make sure that you know where the funds came from, especially if you're a store and somebody sent you like $8 worth of Monero, like the hell's that mean this, you know? It's like, it'd be great if there it was like some type of uh, invoice number or where I could identify the invoice number to, oh, okay, this customer sent me this. So that's what a payment ID is for. Uh, as you see there. So the payment ID is a hexadecimal uh, format. So a character limit is uh, 16, minimum 16. And, well, it's either 16 characters or 32 <coughs> characters or 64 characters, if I remember correctly, I'm not sure exactly. But I know it's 16 minimum. Um, so because it's hexadecimal, you can only type in zero to nine and A to F, okay? So you could, write whatever you want. It, it could be anything, literally anything. So, I mean, when I saw it, I was like, oh shit, do I have to put in a specific payment ID? Like, no, you put in whatever. So a lot of exchanges, they, a they ask you to put the payment ID or else, because the thing is that if you send an arrow to a Binance exchange or some exchange, they have no way of knowing who to credit, right? So that's what the payment ID is for. It associates with your account on, uh, on the exchange, okay? So that's payment ID. So when you send in, you could send your address and a payment ID. So problem comes again, like, okay, now I, I, I have to give the address and the payment ID. So they came up with a integrated address. So an integrated address, all it is is just the regular address combined with the payment ID. They embed the payment ID into the address and then that you get the integrated address. So when you send coins to the integrated address, uh, the other end will know what the payment ID is. So you, now you don't have to give two pieces of information, you just give one. So that's a very important uh, thing to know about with the, with the wallet, especially, because it's very confusing. So um, interesting Monero facts is that there are only 15 million mine, 15 or 16, I'm not sure exactly, mine so far, but uh, by 2022, uh, 18 million will be mined, and then you have uh, tail emissions, which is 0.6 uh, Monero every two minutes. But you don't have to worry about that. But just know that it's gonna be about 18 million by 2022. Bitcoin will be 21 million by 2140, it's 100 something years from now, right? So knowing that, so there's very low <coughs> supply of Monero. So think about that. If once all those people from Litecoin or Ethereum, because Litecoin is 81 million, right? Ethereum is 81 million. If all those guys come in Monero, there's only so many out there. So that's something to factor in, so low supply. <coughs> so 
So like I said, uh, the blockchain download is 40 gigabytes. If you download the Monero Core, uh, it'll take, uh, well, you can download it from a certain site. You can download the whole uh, blockchain and then just unzip it. Uh, but if you were to download it, it'll take you a couple of days with the, with the client. And <clears throat> another thing that I ran into while uh, running Monero is when you load your address, it has to rescan the whole entire blockchain from the beginning to be like, okay, uh, this is your updated balance. Reason why is that, remember the uh, ring, ring signatures, I think they mix all the transactions. They gotta see like which, which coins belong to you or something and then that's how they update the balance. But there, they have solutions for that too, obviously, uh, where you could start at specific blocks in time uh, to, to get your updated balance. But I'm not gonna go too technical into that, obviously. Um, so Android Wallet, uh, we have uh, Monero, Monero Joe. Monero Joe is actually plural for Monero in Esperanto. <laughs> I think, I think, I'm pretty sure it is. So. Um, and then uh, we have Kate Wallet, which uh, the gentleman mentioned um, for iOS. Uh, so these only literally came out like November or October sometime. I, I wouldn't put your whole entire savings into these wallets because the thing is that it's not bio-tested. Like, you know, maybe they got some crazy code to send all the coins away. So yeah, uh, so obviously just put your what you're willing to spend, you know. I mean, if you have a use case for Monero, use it, right? Then you use these wallets. Otherwise, um, just use the core wallet.